Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Uh, this is Draco, and today I'm going to show you how to green screen. Definitely be doing some gaming later, but I wanted to share um, kind of how I have my setup. I've watched a bunch of green screening videos out there, and I don't like a lot of them. A lot of them weren't helpful, and it's taken me some time to really figure out some proper green screening techniques. I think some people get lucky, um, and some people uh, don't. Uh, with me uh, in particular, I'm um, pretty tech savvy person. I, my professional career is in IT, and I, um, I even had some trouble really figuring out the, the world of green screening. A uh, big fan of Dr. Disrespect, of course, and I see his channels and the, the amazing things he does with his layering and his layering of green screens. Um, do, being able to do simple green screening and things like this, or doing a nice clean green screen like I am right now, is um, an achievement in itself, I think. Um, like I said, I think some people get lucky, lucky with the right um, setup, lighting, hardware, environment, or area. Um, so there's a couple uh, things that I wanted to go through that we're going to talk about on green screening today. And I'll try to, um, I am doing this live, so I'll try to get to some comments if there is any, but this will be up on the YouTube as well. And so with the first thing we need to talk about is hardware, right? So what do you need? Well. Uh, I actually use, um, you can use a number, a number of different things, like I use a cotton um, cloth. Um, the benefits of that are it's not reflective, they make some more silkier material, those are, those are reflective and what happens is like the light will bounce off of uh, the material. And let me see if I can actually simulate an effect of what I'm talking about. I'll bring up the flashlight on my phone and I'll kind of bounce it off the screen. So you can kind of see here. If you got too much light going on, it'll bounce off of uh, your green screen and it's not going to be good. You'll have this up in high areas by your lamps or your lights and it'll it'll mess up your green screen and it won't look good. So you definitely want something that's not super reflective. People use uh, cotton sheets, um, other type of material sheets. They use construction paper, um, they'll use um, paint. So Elgato makes a professional one that you can use, but it's small, which is not a big advantage. So the hardware is a big thing. So obviously you need a computer, you need, you need the software, but you need the physical items like lighting uh, and the green screen material itself and how you're gonna do it. Now everybody's environment is different, um, and I'll get into that a little bit, but for the most part, uh, you wanna pick a decent material that is non-reflective, it's green or blue, whatever you wanna do, I use green, and mine is, um, is very large, so it covers a big area. Because I have, I have my camera in widescreen mode, and even though I have a cutoff here, um, I do like to have as much space to kind of operate as, as much as I can. So, anyway, so the first thing like that with the hardware, and the next thing is lighting. So you definitely want to have that have some good lighting. Um, like I said, if you if you have too much lighting, you'll get that that effect I was showing you where, where stuff if it's reflective it'll bounce off. If you've got too much lighting, and it's, even if it's not reflective, the light will bounce off and really mess up your green screen. It's important with the lighting because the shadows that you cast like this, like I have my green screen, I actually want to push further back. It's a little too close to me. So you can see it's nice and clean and everything's dandy until you get like too close and you're casting like a shadow on it. And when you're casting shadow on it, you'll get some green screen uh, fabric tearing like that as well. So big, big, big thing on, on how far back it is, how much lights on it. You can't have too much. You can't have too little. You have too little, you'll get shadows casting on it. If you have too much, you'll get the reflection coming off of it and it sucks. Um, it really it breaks the, the effect, right? Um, you have different options for, like I said, green screen, but you also different about different options for lighting. Um, let me bring up a couple things here. So like some people look at the basic cheap kits on Amazon and that's all fine and dandy. You can do something like, like those that you can buy, um, but they, um, you can't, the lighting's not adjustable is the main thing. So like I actually ended up investing in something like this. It's called a, a newer ring and there's a bunch of other ones. This one's at least affordable. This one's like $108. So you can get this one and it's affordable, it's adjustable, it has a dial and you can put as much light or little light as, as you need to really kind of dial in your green screen. So that's, that's, that's really, really big tips and tricks that took me a while to uh, learn. And so um, the next thing beyond light, like, you know, the soft boxes will work, like I said, but you really want something adjustable and the adjustable ring lights work good. I actually use one soft box light from the kit I had previously bought. So I use one of these and then I use one ring light and I'm able to flood most of the green screen with the first uh, box light like that and then use the ring light to, to adjust and really get in the right amount of lighting. Um, 
And the other thing is like, don't change your environment. Leave your environment alone. Once you dial it in, leave it alone. Don't touch it, because once you start touching it, you're gonna have to, it's, 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 you have to redial it in, trust me with that one. Um, so let's see, next topic I wanna cover is the software. So if you're using Streamlabs or um, XSplit or whatever, just regular OBS, that's all fine and dandy. Um, there's some really huge tips and tricks to using it. So if you're not familiar at all with how to set up a green screen, I can kind of show you um, here in my 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 streamlabs. I don't think there's anything private I really care about on here. So what I do um, is there's obviously a bunch of craziness going on in here. But if you've never green screen, it's easy. I mean, you just go to whatever one you're using for your webcam. This happens to be my my webcam source, and you're going to add a filter and you're gonna add a chroma key filter. So there's my green screen. I don't even have all the wrinkles out of it like I should. Normally I have to try to have it as smooth as possible because then it'll come out way better. Um, even though it's got some wrinkles and stuff in it right now, it's still working really good. Here you can see some of the settings I have set, set up with similarity. So it's like 435, this is a huge one. So it's at 435 right now, but if you start, I don't know if it'll do it. Yeah, it'll do it live here. Let me turn it back on. So you can see that's what this one does. It kind of cuts out most of the uh, color similarities, right? So if you do too much, it cuts out a bunch of your body, doesn't look good. If you get just the right amount, it'll work great. I don't know, I, for my conditions, I had it about 435, um, and I wasn't a, I wasn't needing to use any smoothness. Smoothness can really start cutting out some of the rough edges. So if you don't have enough of the similarity, you can move in the smoothness to just the right amount to also get the same effect. But you wanna use smoothness as a last resort. You really wanna use this guy as a first resort, and then smooth it out a little bit as you go, right? So those are the two main things on the chroma key that really make a huge, huge, huge difference. Um, a lot, and all these little tips and tricks I'm telling you and these little secrets are, are like two years of research plus you know, maybe more on green screening and secrets that a lot of the streamers don't, they don't tell you. Um, and so these two, this is the basics, right? You'll see this on YouTube or whatever. The big, big, big thing that makes it look really clear is I turn off all the other stuff that controls my webcam and let me actually bring this back over here and what I do is if you go to your video capture device you don't go to filters but you go to you go to the uh, and actually I should have done that in, in a bigger screen here so let me show you that again because you probably couldn't see so what you want to do is you go to filters I forgot I didn't change my scene there so you go to filters here's your chroma key and these these similarities are the big the big difference in the color correction that you really want to focus on and the smoothing will get rid of those rough edges, but like I said, last resort, you wanna stick to getting as much of this in the similarity as you can, then using smoothness if you have to, and you'll get a nice clean effect. So now that you can see that in full screen and see those, those settings without me covering them up. So the other big super secret is in your, your capture device, is if you go to properties and you go to configure video, uh, let me bring this guy over, this one's huge, okay, is all the auto features for your camera. So like I'm using some Logitech C920 2Xs, C930E, C920, they're all the same thing, it doesn't really matter. Um, C930E's got a little better quality. It's the C official C922 X Logitech cameras, like they're all the same crap, I've used them all. Um, and so the big thing for me, Commander Pancake Shadow, how's it going guys? The big thing for me is white balance. So like when you turn on auto white balancing, it jacks up everything. Uh, the auto white balancing really it just doesn't work good with green screen. This is the kind of shit like Dr. Disrespect does and um, you know a lot of these green screen professionals that they don't really tell people. You know, they, I think they find it kind of found out through messing with it as time goes along. So this one's huge. And then you can see if I like really like start messing with the, uh, let me turn that off, the white balance. You'll see the, uh, you'll see the green screen start having a bad effect when you're messing with white balance. And so you don't want the white balance fluctuating around if you're using a green screen. So it's it's gonna mess with it really really bad um, like you can see here like I was showing you so you want to make sure you turn that off to auto I find that mine's really good around 5,000 um, and I apply it and it cuts out really well the other big super secret thing for me on here is the exposure so if auto exposure is on forget it uh, the only thing I really leave on and sometimes it still screws me up is the autofocus autofocus is nice I leave it on because a lot of times I like to try to hold things up to the camera and the camera will like auto focus on it like that and then it'll focus back on me. So that works well for me, but it also can really mess with your green screen. Like I noticed like uh, Dr. Disrespect's green scenes, they don't do shit. His cameras don't do shit 
his cameras are set to a setting and they stay there because he doesn't want any of the illusion to go away from his green screens or anything like that. And I just know from messing with it and watching him that that's what he's doing for sure. Um, so exposure and uh, white balance, turn that shit off. White balance, go somewhere between 4,500 and 5,000. It's going to depend on your lighting and everything like that. But like around 5,200, whatever, 5,000, that kind of works for me. Um, clothes, clothes and chair. Oh my God. Obviously I'm wearing dark colors. I'm not wearing blues. I'm not wearing greens. I'm not wearing anything like that. Um, I even got rid of my other chair and I got this darker chair because it cuts out way better. And so definitely just colors, man. Even your hair, your makeup, like all that kind of shit. You'll always notice the guys that are like are heavy green screen users. They're not even remotely wearing like most. It kind of limits you a little bit, but I mean, if you need to change your colors up, you can. That's why you need to really decide uh, if you go like a blue screen or a green screen, what your, you know, what your color tastes are and things like that. So I usually like dark colors anyway, so it doesn't, it doesn't even bother me. Like I usually never wear green or anything like that. So. Um, like I said, the, uh, or sometimes uh, Mexi Melt streams with me, she's my wife, and like having a huge green screen that you know goes all the way out over there just really helps, especially if you have someone sitting next to you. And a big, big thing with the cameras is like the, the ceiling, right? So I have like this huge 10 by 40 cotton green screen that I got off like Amazon, I think is what it was. And let me see if I can even find it. I don't even know where I found it. I think it was like a 10 by 40 like green screen. Yeah, it's like huge. You can buy the material. Like that's a ten by twenty, um, and I think that maybe that's what mine is like a ten by twenty or something like that is what it is. I think this is the one I bought. It was like forty bucks. I think it got on sale for thirty five or something. But it's just huge material. You can iron it out and you know, get it wrinkle free, and then you can just have this like massive green screen. Now that doesn't always work for everybody. Like I said, there's tons of material, but you got to figure out your material and then figure out uh, your lighting and. Dial it in. Use those tips and tricks and dial it in and you'll have an epic green screen. You won't have any problem. Appreciate you guys checking out this Tech Tuesday quick 15-20 uh, minute stream with me. Um, and if you're seeing this on YouTube at some other point, uh, like, comment, and subscribe. I always appreciate it and I'll be looking forward to doing more of these. There's a lot of a lot of info in this brain and I'm deciding like I should probably share this shit and see if anybody cares about it. So um, thanks guys.